Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Candace McClung, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the new features and of role-based security within um, Release 2 of AX 2012. So a couple things on our agenda here. Um, we're going to go through some terms that you should know and understand um, about role-based security. Some pain points from the previous versions and why Microsoft decided to change it in the first place. Uh, and then we'll go through some of the actual changes, like the default security definitions, um, some shared security roles, talk a little bit about auditing and compliance, and we'll wrap it up with the conversation about data security. There are a few terms you should definitely be familiar with when you look at role-based security within AX to really understand how it works. A role, first of all, um, is just a behavior pattern of a person within the organization. So these are just going to be, you know, your accountant, purchasing agent, um, AP clerk, warehouse manager, those types of things are all, are all roles. Um, a duty is a set of application access privileges required uh, for the user's responsibility. So this is everything all encompassing of what uh, the role actually needs to be able to function. Um, and then a job is just a group of responsibilities and duties and job functions uh, that compose activities within the system. And then again, a job function is just tasks and duties assigned to jobs. Then we have the concept of permissions and privileges, which are both contained within duties. Um, a privilege is going to specify the access level required to perform a job. So this is the actual action. It's giving you the privilege to do something. That's a good way of thinking about it. Um, and then within privileges, you'll find permissions, which are um, going to grant access to entry points. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, the user needs to actually perform the actions that the privileges are defining. And then a security role is just the big picture. Um, you can see here from the diagram, it's, it's a hierarchical type of relationship. Security role is the entire thing. So in previous versions, uh, the security was assigned to users or user groups. Um, so these user groups were created by administrators and no defaults were provided. So administrators had to create any sort of role that you needed to set up security for, which you can imagine is a lot to do. Um, access was granted by administrators to tables, fields, and menu items necessary for the completion of those tasks the users completed. Um, so essentially the permissions, what they're called now, for the user groups were manually chosen by the administrator. And that just um, is even more cumbersome than setting up the user groups because you have to define all of these roles for the group, which again is a lot to do. And it was all done manually. Um, user groups were created in each company. so. If you had, you know, 50 roles that you needed to create, because that's how many different tasks or roles were within the organization, but you also had, I don't know, 50 legal entities, that's 2,500 user groups that you have to create to be able to sustain your security within your system. And then not to mention assigning the duties um, and granting access to each of those. You can imagine, very difficult. The auditing of the security, again, is, was manual as well. So you would have to go into each of those groups and make sure that everything was compliant um, with segregation of duties. Um, there is no you know, automatic or reporting method of doing that. So all of this made security setup and maintenance extremely complex and cumbersome. Thus, it has been upgraded 
in the following ways. So the first big change um, is obviously these default security definitions. Um, and basically, these are just standard predefined rules that come out of the box. There um, are about 49 of them. And they're customizable through the client. So um, I'm actually going to navigate over. So if we come to security roles within system administration, on this left-hand panel, these are all the roles that are included out of the box. So you can see there's a plethora of roles to choose from. And within each role, you will see duties assigned. Um, and then within those duties, of course, permissions and privileges, which we'll get to in just a minute. So um, again, no user groups are necessary in 2012 because the roles come standard, which is what I just showed you. Um, and they're all based on job functionality. So and you're, you can remove or add duties from roles, privileges from duties, and permissions from privileges. So these are highly customizable, and you do it through the client. So there's, it's not like a developer has to go in and make these changes to permissions or anything like that for you. Um, users, well, admin users can do that right from the client interface. Um, and you can assign individual users to one or multiple roles. So if there's ever a need for someone to perform two different roles, you don't have to set up a separate um, role for them. You can just assign them to two. And we navigate back over. You can see that you can do it either from the security role form by saying assign users. And then for each role, we would just manually assign a user. And now this user is a compliance manager. Um, this can also be done, like everything else in AX, from several different locations. There's another node in the security setup, which is the same form. But you can also do it from the actual user's form. So if we go in, you can see this, this user is already a system administrator. So I can come in and assign another role. Very easily. And then they also added this feature of process, process cycles um, to help administrators during setup. And all process cycles are, are is a method of organization um, to help find duties based on the business process that's being performed. Process cycles can't actually be added to the role itself. Again, they're just there for organization. Um, so if we come over here, and if we want to add a duty to this role, you can see we're viewing by the process cycle, and it gives several different cycles within business processes, and then the duties are then separated in here to make it easier to, to find them. The next enhancement is the concept of shared security roles. So before, like I said, you would have to create a different um, role within each company or user group within each company. Um, but now the security roles are shared, and users can be assigned to the same role in all legal, legal entities or different roles in different legal entities. So maybe um, the user is a treasurer in one um, legal entity but actually needs 
um, access to the GL accounts in a different one for some reason. You can set that up. Um, and so there's no need to create the different security definitions in multiple companies. And show you that. So if we navigate back over to the users, So this Assign Organizations um, button is used. And you can see that this user is currently um, set to have access in all organizations. But we can specify an organization uh, and grant access only there. For auditing and compliance purposes, um, so there are going to be fewer security objects that are assigned to fewer groups of users. So it's just a lot less to audit in the first place. Um, the audit trails have become more visible in 2012, so it's very easy to see um, what users are doing. And the roles and duties allow for auditing of business activities rather than program elements. So you don't have to audit based on you know, fields and tables and menu items anymore. You can actually audit based on the activity being accomplished by the rule. And there's a good bit of functionality around the segregation of duties within 2012, um, roles that are set up and um, to actually make sure that these uh, roles are compliant and that they're um, in line with what you're setting. So that will be a future webinar. And the idea of record level security um, in previous versions is being phased out. It's still um, functioning in 2012 R2, but will not exist in future releases. And that's because record level security was built to um, kind of enforce the restrictions of the user group. And since, it's, since there's no longer security based on your user groups, which were restricting menus and forms, tables, fields, uh, obviously RL, RLS is not necessary. So instead, the new framework for data security is um, extensible data security. And Basically, these restrictions are based on not just um, not only the tables, but also fields. So it's a lot more of a granular approach to the data security. Um, and also, it's maintained on the server rather than in the client. So whereas before, RLS would send all information over and just um, kind of omit information that the user shouldn't have access to. Extensible data security only sends over information that the user actually has access to. So that makes that a lot more secure as well. And um, there's also a functionality of uh, date effective security. So you can say that a user only has access from point A to point B of a certain um, you know, table, field, anything you want to specify. Um, so this is really important moving forward as the program becomes more normalized um, in future versions. This will really be an enhancement then. So I think that is just about it for the, the big enhancements on, in R2. Does anyone have any questions or anything I can expand on? OK, well, if anybody has any questions that you come up with, um, feel free to email info at ibisync.com, and um, I can help you out with that. Other than that, that's all I have for today. So thank you again for joining, and check us out next time.